Welcome back to My Free Life with me, Sax Williams. Come on in. Being prepared for unseen problems is important, especially in days like today. So, this channel is dedicated to teaching you how to be off the grid, create your own energy, you know, turn wood into fuel, things like that. How to be prepared in case the grid goes down. So, stick with me. Let's make this stuff happen. Well, hello, guys and gals. Thanks for joining me again. My Free Life. I'm Sax Williams. On this episode, uh, it's going to be part two of the diesel fuel reactor build, uh, converting plastic into liquid diesel fuel. Uh, in today's video, we'll be building the condensers. So uh, let's get right on into it. And again, thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share with some friends, leave some comments, uh, help push us along. All right, right into it. All right, so for the second part, of this diesel fuel reactor build we and got this uh, air tank from the pawn shop for under 30 bucks I need to find me another one but I'm going to uh, make the two condensers um, out of these tanks so which sucks because this is a great tank I hate to uh, tear into it but I need the cylinders so uh, I'm gonna pull this apart put some legs on it and get to making the first condenser and here's my design for the condensers the tank with the legs on it, the three quarter inch gas lines installed with the elbows so that we could transfer gas from one tank to the other tank with the drain line at the bottom with the valve on it to be able to, to drain the fuel out of it whenever, whenever it's you know done going through its process. Now I'm going to prep this tank by getting rid of this and uh, I probably won't cut the handle off till later because I might need to use it while I'm doing what I'm doing. So let me take that uh, air gauge off. I need some legs for this uh, air tank that's going to be the first condenser. So in my case, it's 25 and a half inches because I want them to be the same length as the legs on that. So let me cut four of those and then we'll move on. I actually switched up my idea a little bit here. Rather than doing the four legs, I'm just going to do three legs and do a tripod setup instead. Put uh, some 30 degree angle cuts on uh, all the legs, backward cuts. That way, uh, you know, it, it, can, it can spread out and have uh, more stability set in there rather than, than, than doing four legs. I don't need to, it's unnecessary. So that's what we're doing here is uh, we're cutting three legs out and putting angle cuts on it. this tripod freestanding we can get ready to start uh, working on the next part of this condenser which is going to be putting in the gas line to run down and then the exit port gas line that's going to run over to the uh, second condenser but uh let's get going peace our next step here is going to be putting in the gas lines this here is a three quarter inch gas line two foot long we want it to set about close to the bottom quarter of the tank so I'll put a mark on this line and we'll drop this gas line in and weld it off be using a hole dozer kit to put the holes in and once we get that gas line put in then we will next put in the exit gas line another three quarter inch this will just go right in to the top here. We'll be using elbows, three quarter inch elbows. So at the top of this gas line, we'll have the elbow where the line will run over to the reactor tank. And we'll be using a 
PTC high temp connector to isolate the heat from the steel off of the reactor coming into the condensers. <laughs> Looks like I'm gonna have to cut the tank open <laughs> to get that out of there. Well, my bit was certainly not supposed to fall in the tank, so that was not part of the plan. Now I'm gonna have to cut the tank open so I can get the bit out of there. But it looks like there's a bunch of nastiness inside of that tank anyway, so not really a bad idea. Cut it up and clean it out. Weld that cap back on there. But anyway, not part of the plan. Hopefully you can avoid this part. This was quite serendipitous really because this tank is nasty inside. I already got done building this, went through all that process trying to figure out why my fuel was bad every time I tried to use it, tried to burn it. So this mistake actually is a very fortunate mistake. I need to flush this tank out. So uh, I'm not so upset about that now. I would have been trying to figure out forever what was going on with the fuel. So that's good to know. So now on the next tank I'll intentionally cut it open. Look at this nastiness. This is what was inside of that tank, yeah. I would have never been achieving diesel fuel and trying to figure out why the whole time. So that was a really good mistake right there. Thank God for that. Lucky mistake. Blessings come in all shapes and sizes. Remember that. Alright, now that we've got this tank flushed out, we need to go ahead and put another hole in here for the other three quarter inch gas line. It's going to come out and run over to the other condenser. We need to flip this tank upside down. We need to put a hole in the center, in the bottom, and weld a three quarter inch gas line in the bottom of that that we can put a valve on to be able to get the fuel out of this tank. So uh, right now we're going to go ahead and drill those holes out and get it all prepped up and get those gas lines welded in. I don't want to go too far in the tank. I want to try to get that as flush inside of there as possible so the buildup doesn't have to get as high with the liquid before it can come out. So if I stick it all the way down in there, well obviously it's going to have to get above that line to be able to drain it. So I want to try to get this as flush as possible so it's at the bottom of this curvature on this tank so that that fuel can drain out easier. So right as I was getting ready to start welding that other gas line in, I realized that that's a galvanized line. You don't want to weld on galvanized. That'll, uh, that, the fumes are toxic. It can literally kill you. So do not weld galvanized, all right? That's a very bad idea. Um, so I switched out and got me a, a steel, just a, a regular steel gas line to weld in here for that. So yeah, don't weld galvanization. So now we've got the gas line put in the bottom, which we will be putting a valve on that so that we can put a uh, container underneath it to, to fill up uh, the liquid that we create in here in this first condenser. And I don't know if you can see in there, but that's the inside. We're barely coming over the bottom of that curvature in that tank, so it's not going to take as much fuel in there before it can start draining out. So anyway, now we're going to put our exit line in here. So we'll drill out that hole 
and then we'll weld another steel, not galvanized steel, but just regular steel gas line coming out of here. Um, this one doesn't need to go very far in the tank, but uh, it doesn't have to be flush or anything because it's just the gas vapor is going to be coming up out of there, so it's going to find its way regardless. So let's do that. Alright, now let's drop the center line in. It's the one that's going to go in near the bottom of that tank uh, for the hot gas to come in and give it a chance to condense before those gases come up and come out of the first condenser into the second condenser, which is why we grinded that paint off that there, so that's going to be where we're going to weld it into. But we'll use our little magnets, we'll get this set inside the tank down to about right here and we'll get this one welded in. So let's do that. Now it's time to tack on the transfer line for the other tank. To transfer from this tank, the gases, into the second condenser. So let's get this tacked on there. All right, since this uh, tank's cut open, we can get a look on the inside, get an idea of what that pipe's gonna look like inside of there. It's just gonna hang in the middle there, pretty much right above the drain, the drain spout at the bottom, but it doesn't have to be perfectly uh, center on whatever you're building. That that's kind of irrelevant, but um, I like things to be somewhat symmetrical. So once you've got this all done, you've got your exit line at the bottom that you're going to put a valve on, so you can use to uh, put fill jars underneath and turn the vo valve on and off as needed. You've got the entry line, gas line that's going to be coming from the reactor. And then you've got your exit line that's going to be going out to the second condenser. And this is only inside of this tank about an inch. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be uh, down in there deep for the exit fumes. So on the top of the uh, intake gas line coming from the reactor, I'm going to put the three quarter inch coupling on there, connector. The reason why we're going to use this is we're going to widen this top up but we're not going to be putting another pipe into here. Instead, we're going to be using this PTC uh, high temp rubber connector that'll go right over the top of this to isolate the heat from the burn on the reactor tank coming into this tank to keep this condenser a lot cooler instead of transferring that heat uh, steel all the way straight to this steel. So we'll use this to isolate that so that uh, we have a better chance of condensing because the temperature will be a lot, a lot cooler in here if we can isolate that heat coming off of that reactor. So this will go on here to be able to come off of that reactor. And then we'll be throwing this elbow on here, this 90, to uh, get it set up to transfer to the next reactor. So that, I mean, not the next reactor, but the next condenser. So this condenser is basically completely done uh, aside of welding the, the cap back on there that I had to cut out to get that drill bit out of there. But I'm going to go ahead and flush this tank one more time while it's cut open. And then uh, I'll probably take this whole tank, set it over my fire pit, make a fire underneath it to make sure it's completely dried out inside before I go to welding this cap back on uh, that I cut out to get into it. And then it'll be wash, rinse, and repeat. We'll build another one exactly the same, and that will be our two condensers. Okay, for one final one over, we've got the isolation, heat isolation, uh, high temp rubber connector that's going to the coupling, three quarter inch coupling, into the three quarter inch gas pipe that is sunk down near the bottom of this tank, a few inches off the bottom of the tank. Underneath, we have the gas line welded in that's coming out where we'll be putting a, a, a valve on so that we can drain it. We've got the three quarter inch exit pipe coming out and this is only in the tank about an inch or so, just enough to get it in there to weld it in. We've got the elbow, three quarter inch elbow, and then I've got a two foot 
uh, by three quarter inch gas line uh, in that screwed into that that's going to be coming over to transfer into exactly one more of these tanks right here so we'll be building this twice and then off of the second tank it'll have the same exit that comes out but that'll be going into a final hold barrel so that's the uh, condenser and we'll be making two of those but uh obviously i've got to weld that cap back in there but i want to i want to flush it out one more time and heat the tank up to make sure it's completely dry and then i'll weld that cap back on there but anyway that's the condenser